there are better ways to keep cool. Call KS Services and receive a new Bryant unit with no payments and no interest for 18 months. Stay cool now and pay later. Visit callks.com for more. Here's your weather video for this Sunday. It's September 13th. I'm meteorologist Bill Murray. Very consequential forecast for the Gulf Coast and possibly for central Alabama as um, a the, the weakening remains of what will be Hurricane Sally will be drifting up into Alabama uh, by midweek. Uh, calm this morning across the state, though. Uh, we've got uh, lower and middle 70s across much of the area. It's humid. It's warm. Uh, some low clouds across the area. Some showers in the northwestern corner of the state back across Mississippi. That's sort of a pattern you'll see today. Trough of low pressure to our west. Uh, some showers and thunderstorms will move across northwestern portions of Alabama, keeping things a little bit cooler up there. But our problem is Tropical Storm Sally. It is intensifying this morning over the southeastern Gulf of Mexico, uh, some 375 miles southeast of Mobile, moving to the northwest now at about 15 miles an hour. Top winds uh, found by Air Force Reconnaissance about 50 miles an hour. The plane is en route back to Biloxi now, but another plane will be departing to investigate the storm sometime around 9.30 this morning. So we'll have more reports around noon. There are signs that the uh, intensification will continue as the center uh, begins to develop or as the storm begins to develop a, uh, a good inner core. Uh, water over the Gulf of Mexico is, of course, warm still this time of year. Shear is fairly low. And uh, intensification will be steady at least. And for some period of time, it may be rapid. There are signs that uh, that uh, quick intensification may occur on Monday, and uh, our hair will be on fire as we watch that occur. Um, for certain, these are these are intensity uh, plots here off some of the models. Uh, a couple of them, including the H wharf, uh, do take it up into Category Three uh, territory, which is not good news. Uh, of course, Category Three would be any time we get winds of 111 miles an hour or higher. That's very possible with the system. It is forecast to make landfall with winds of 100 miles an hour, but 10 to 15 mile an hour errors are nothing at this stage in the game um, in the forecast process. Now, this is the morning, or this is the latest model guidance that we've got. Fairly good consistency with it going into southeastern Louisiana, curving to the north and northeast, and that puts Alabama in the path, but the system does slow a good bit as it nears the coast and makes that turn, uh, which give it time to weaken. Uh, that won't uh, mitigate the rainfall effects as much. Uh, well, to some degree it will, but, you know, we could still see three to, you know, six inches of rain across parts of Alabama uh, because of this system, but at least the winds will have a chance uh, to die down. This is the official cone, and as uh, Max Mayfield always told, told us, uh, don't look at the skinny black line, so we don't even show it. But these are the um, official forecast center positions. Uh, remember that effects of the hurricane happen a long distance away uh, from the center. And that cone that you see, that shaded area, is um, basically two-thirds of the uh, average forecast error of the National Hurricane Center at all those forecast points. So uh, conceivably, you could see the center anywhere in that cone. You could see it outside that cone. Uh, but really, the area now being centered in upon is from Mobile Bay there on the right, as you see there uh, on the Alabama coast, back to uh, Atchafalaya Bay uh, near Morgan City on the Louisiana coast. That's the most likely area of landfall. But of course, a landfall over here near Mobile would look like, a lot like Hurricane Frederick. Uh, maybe not as strong, could possibly be, but um, 1979's Hurricane Frederick landfall anniversary 41 years ago yesterday. And we remember what that did. Could be anywhere on the Mississippi coast, could be right over New Orleans, which is what the official track says. And we'll look at that more closely in a minute. Or it could be to the west of New Orleans which would carry it more up into northern Mississippi and northwest Alabama. You see this forecast track carries it really right over Birmingham on Thursday as a depression. And we'll talk about that more in a minute. Uh, I like to look at earliest reasonable arrival of tropical storm force winds because this is when you really need to have your preparations buttoned up along the Gulf Coast. And a lot of times we'll look at most likely, but in this situation our time frames are getting tight. Earliest reasonable 
would be um, the earliest um, time we would expect tropical storm force winds to begin with any sort of forecast confidence. And that will be after midnight tonight along the coast. Um, there in that higher probability area from Pensacola West back through Mobile and Baldwin counties. And, um, well, really just into maybe the Gulf Shores, Orange Beach area, uh, progressing through the morning hours uh, up into Mobile by 8 a.m. into southeastern Louisiana by um, 8 a.m. tomorrow. So really those eastern parishes, Plaquemine, St. Bernard, um, uh, Jackson County, Mississippi, Mobile, Baldwin counties in Alabama, you need to be ready um, today. Uh, preparations need to be completed um, today and tonight uh, before those tropical storm force winds have a chance to arrive. Now they'll the storm slows and they'll move. You know the chance that they'll get into New Orleans is more um, late morning tomorrow and then into the afternoon hours. But you can see now. Also, I want to show you those probabilities at the same time because when we see probabilities exceeding about thirty to forty percent, that's when we start expecting that we'll see some sort of wind warning, wind advisory um, in Alabama. You can see that's probably going to happen, uh, at least for west central and maybe central Alabama as the system begins to make the turn. Now, there is no modeling this morning that tells this story. So I'm not going to have a bunch of pretty graphics for you with uh, precipitation patterns and things. I'm going to use the official National Hurricane Center forecast. I don't think there's any better. And I'll just use the wind field and kind of tell you what I think is going to happen with the rain um, and the possibility of tornadoes because, you know, as a landfalling tropical system, we always have to worry about that. Um, here's 6 p.m. tonight, the center uh, south of the Florida Panhandle, the wind field well offshore. Uh, winds are going to be averaging some 15 to 20 miles an hour along the Florida coast today. It won't be a washout. We'll see partly sunny skies. Uh, a slight chance of a shower or thunderstorm. Seas will be increasing two to three feet. The um, rip currents will be increasing. Now you move further to the west, we're going to get, we'll see those rip current threats all along the beaches increase to high by tonight. And they're going to really stay that way into Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, diminishing from the east as we go through time. Now here's 6 a.m. Monday. The system's moving along. You see it's there south of Gulf Shores by that point. By pretty good distance. The expected forecast carries keeps that wind field south of the coast. We'll see, um, you know, winds beginning to increase 20 to 30 miles an hour along the Alabama coast, northwest Florida coast, places like Pensacola and Navarre, maybe over to Fort Walton, you know, 15 to 20 miles an hour in Destin, Panama City. Um, and really the winds will begin to diminish uh, from areas Destin to the east uh, during the day on Monday, but those seas will be increasing and that rip current threat um, will still be there. And folks in uh, southeastern Louisiana, Mississippi, the Alabama coast will be preparing for tropical storm and um, hurricane conditions for sure. Now this is uh, 9 o'clock Monday. The first landfall occurs uh, near the South Pass, the mouth of the Mississippi River, um, about 9 p.m. Monday night. About the time we're taping weather brains, we should be uh, tracking a landfall according to this official forecast. Tropical storm force winds may be being felt at that time um, on the Alabama coast, perhaps over into the um, uh, western Florida panhandle, but most likely uh, being uh, beginning to be felt on the Mississippi coast, places like Pascagoula, Biloxi, Gulfport, Pass Christiane, uh, Bay St. Louis. Um, they'll be getting into tropical storm force winds. The eastern parishes, uh, southeastern parishes of Louisiana uh, will be in uh, full tropical storm force winds. And you see that little aqua area, uh, that line delineates the stronger tropical storm force winds, greater than 58 miles an hour. It's moving into southeastern Louisiana at that point, too. Um, the eye wall of the hurricane be passing up the mouth of the Mississippi River at that point. And as you can tell, um, or you could infer from this, um, a fairly significant, very dangerous, life-threatening storm surge will be uh, piling into that uh, part of the coast there, uh, you know, the Mississippi coast, uh, Lake Bourne, Lake Pontchartrain, those eastern parishes uh, in Louisiana are going to see 7 to 11 feet, really from Ocean Springs to the west, to the mouth of the Mississippi River. In that concave part of the uh, coast, the storm surge is going to be extremely dangerous. Now, it's going to take its time making its way up the mouth of the Mississippi River. It's sitting over New Orleans, according to the official track, on noon on Tuesday. Uh, winds, you know, weaken maybe just a tad uh, at that point, but the eye wall could be sitting right over the city of New Orleans. 
And, um, of course, we could be uh, seeing some, uh, you know, fairly decent wind damage in the city of New Orleans and areas just to the east slide L. And the water levels will be really, really significant. Now, by this time, um, we're going to have heavy rain into southwest uh, Alabama, um, you know, uh, you know, for us on Monday here in central Alabama, we, you know, and, and really, let's go back and talk about today for a minute. Um, today, we're going to see some subsidence from the storm, um, some showers and thunderstorms over northwest Alabama, as we talked about. The rest of it's just hot, humid, partly cloudy, um, you know, maybe an isolated shower storm, but mainly dry. Um, a few showers popping up over um, southern parts, um, you know, of Alabama later today. Gusty winds. Really east of I-59 today, 15, 10 to 15 miles an hour with occasional gusts. We'll see some 20 mile per hour gusts later this afternoon, but expect partly sunny and hot conditions. Partly cloudy into the overnight tonight, lows uh, in the lower 70s. Increasing clouds tomorrow, um, highs in the upper 80s. Rain and thunderstorms moving into south Alabama, some scattered showers and thunderstorms for us in central Alabama. But then Tuesday, that rain shield is going to be sliding slowly to the north. Um, as you see, lower 80s across most of the area with, um, uh, you know, mostly cloudy skies. Some upper 70s over the south. Now, that heavy rain will move into west central Alabama late Tuesday night. As we get into this picture, you see the center of the storm over uh, southern Mississippi uh, moving slowly to the north, beginning to make that turn to the northeast. And um, that heavy rain will move into west central Alabama late Tuesday night. You will see those winds begin to increase, 15 to 25 miles an hour gusty. Um, you know, coming out of the southeast as that uh, storm begins to approach our area. And uh, then by, you know, it'll make a, a very slow trek across Mississippi. You can see that almost no movement at all during the day on Wednesday, uh, just to the northwest of Meridian by 6 p.m., getting ready to make that turnover into Alabama. Um, I think that's when we'll deal with some uh, tornado threat. West central, southwest Alabama area, south and uh, west of Tuscaloosa, maybe over to Montgomery. Heavy rain also beginning to uh, encroach on that area, or at least a good steady soaking rain moving to the northeast also. And then by 6 a.m. Thursday, we see that center uh, somewhere probably just west of Tuscaloosa, southwest of Tuscaloosa. Heavy rain uh, overspreading areas east and northeast of the center. Winds will be gusting. Well, it'll be a depression at this point. Winds will be averaging 30, 35 miles an hour, some occasional gusts to stronger than that. Um, I think by that time we're sort of in a, a big heavy rain shield. I don't know that we'll see a big severe weather threat on Thursday, but we'll be on the lookout for that. And then uh, it begins to accelerate a little bit to the northeast by 6 p.m. Thursday. It's moving into northeast Alabama. Now, focusing on storm surge for a minute, uh, because I think that's very a very critical concern um, with um, what we're going to have here, which is uh, you know going to be a Category 2 hurricane, maybe a Category 3 moving into a very um, vulnerable portion of the coast. Um, storm surge warnings are in effect for the coast of Mississippi, southeastern Louisiana. Storm surge watch for all the Alabama coast. Now, these are the expected um, storm surge heights according to the National Hurricane Center from Ocean Springs back to the mouth of the Mississippi River. That's the key concern, 7 to 11 feet. Four and this is really outside the you know the uh, hurricane protection levees, four to six feet on Lake Pontchartrain and Lake Maurepas, Lake Bourne east of New Orleans seven to eleven feet, four to seven feet uh, there on the southeastern coast uh, of Louisiana around Grand Isle from Port Fourchon to the mouth of the Mississippi River. The Alabama coast experiencing uh, two to four feet, uh, one to three feet along most of the Florida coast. So. This is going to be a very dangerous and life-threatening surge uh, for those um, storm surge warning areas, that four to seven feet from Ocean Springs to the uh, Alabama border and then back to the mouth of the Mississippi River. Um, you know, this is going to cause real problems and will result in evacuations today. So everyone in those areas needs to be uh, listening to their local officials. Now, heavy rain will be the other threat. Look at that, almost 12 inches of rain. This is the official WPC, the Weather Prediction Center forecast, showing almost 12 inches of rain in Mobile, up to a foot of rain, southern Mississippi, uh, eastern, uh, Louis southeastern Louisiana. Fortunately, there is uh, apparently a good delineation cutoff right over the New Orleans area. Eastern portions of New Orleans could get 8 to 10 inches of rain. That includes the city of New Orleans. That could swamp uh, their flood uh, pumping systems there. Uh, hopefully that won't happen. 
but we will watch for that. And up into central Alabama, you can see a generous uh, three to five inch amounts uh, across much of north and central Alabama with some four to six inch amounts there, especially south and west of Tuscaloosa. We're going to be watching that closely for flooding. Lots of flash flood um, watches are already in effect um, today. They go into effect. Some of them have already gone into effect. Others uh, will go into effect later today. Um, National Weather Service and Mobile's got them up into southwest Alabama. National Weather Service in Jackson up into southern Mississippi. But really everything from southeast Louisiana to Miami uh, now along the Gulf Coast is in a flash flood watch. Now, the good news is this thing moves on out Friday and big high pressure moves in. It's going to be almost fall-like. Uh, this is Friday, showing most of the activity's gone. Saturday, a beautiful day, maybe a few showers over southeast Alabama, and then Sunday looks absolutely gorgeous. Look at these temperatures off the national blend of models. We're going to be near 90 uh, today and tomorrow, of course. Backing off a little bit on Tuesday with the clouds and showers increasing. Uh, rain, thunderstorms in the area on Wednesday and Thursday, keeping us in the 70s. Um, back up around 80 Thursday, on Friday and Saturday, but uh, just an absolutely perfect day on Sunday. Beautiful blue skies, 59 to start the day, 78 uh, for the high, and about a repeat there on uh, Monday. Tuesday and Wednesday, not so bad either. Now, believe me, I don't. you probably haven't seen the, tri the tropics much busier than this. Um, we'd be talking about this any other time. At Hurricane Paulette will make a direct strike on Bermuda. Top winds about 90, 95 miles an hour on Monday morning. Be a big impact for that beautiful island nation. Uh, past that, Renee will become a remnant low. Uh, perhaps not before we have four named storms in the Atlantic at the same time because Tropical Depression 20 is forecast um, to become a tropical storm at some point. Uh, maybe tonight, uh, could be early tomorrow, but this will become uh, Tropical Storm Teddy. And that's not all. Um, that's 20 right there. That'll become Teddy. This system right here um, has a high probability of becoming a tropical depression in the next few days. But it looks like it'll turn out to sea also, as you saw Teddy was going to curve out to sea there. But uh, this next system coming off the African coast will be the next one to watch, and it looks like it has a chance to make a little more westerly track. Weather range tomorrow night will be interesting. We'll be talking about, um, obviously, Sally. Um, we'll also go back and talk to Donald Jones from the National Weather Service in Lake Charles about the work he did during Hurricane Laura. And we'll have Matt Haven and our own Taylor Sorallo here, uh, ABC 3340, will be joining us. It'll be a jam-packed show, one you won't want to miss tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. Weather brains on uh, all the favorite locations where you pick up the show. Well, that's a very busy, uh, tropically-induced uh, weather video for this Sunday, September the 13th. I'll have notes on the blog. Of course, frequent, continuous updates all the way through Thursday as the system moves through uh, the Gulf Coast and uh, through Alabama. And I'll forecast update for you at noon today as well. Uh, James will be back two days uh, tomorrow and all week. And Scott will here, sit here next Saturday. I'll be back Sunday. And until I get to see you again, as I always tell you, keep an eye to the sky because you'll always have something fun to look at. Never wait for hot water again with a tankless water heater from Plumbing Experts. Tankless water heaters are easy, convenient, and now more affordable with a no-interest financing for up to 18 months. Stop with the cold showers and wasted water and call Plumbing Experts today.